Today, we're going to take a quick look at Ben-Hur, starring Toby Kebbell, Jack Huston, and Morgan Freeman. And I know I'm way late to the party on this one. I was actually supposed to see this movie before it was officially released. I had a pass for an advanced screening. Unfortunately, they screwed something up with the projector and they weren't able to show us the movie. I did have an interesting experience waiting in line to see the movie, however. While I'm standing in this long-ass line, waiting to get in to hopefully see this early screening, some kid walks up to me and says, Hey, what are you in line for? And I told him, Ben-Hur. What? Ben-Hur. Bender? Like, no, Ben-Hur. And then he looks at his friends, with a very confused look on his face, and he says, What's a Ben-Hur? And then he and his friends wander off, and like I turn to the guy behind me in line and like, did that just happen? Like, I can understand if he hasn't seen like the classic Charlton Heston version, because it's probably twice as old as he is, but how have you not at least heard of it? My god. I know I sound like an old man here, but just how does that happen? I don't know. But yeah, they screwed up the projector, so I had to wait until the actual opening weekend to see it, but then I was too busy being sick, so I had to put it off even further. Eventually, I did see the damn movie. Man, it was not worth the wait. <laughs> oh no. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not very good either. Now, if you're somehow not familiar with the story of Ben-Hur, and... Clearly, people like that exist. <laughs> I met one of them in line that night. Uh, it takes place about 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. The story focuses on Judah Ben-Hur, a Jewish prince, and his adopted brother and best friend Masala, who happens to be a Roman. Eventually, Masala decides to join the Roman army and quickly advances through its ranks, and returns home a few years later to tell his brother Judah that the Romans are installing a new governor in Jerusalem, some guy named Pontius Pilate, you may have heard of him, and he wants his arrival to go smoothly and would like Judah's help in that. Some zealots have been causing trouble for the Romans lately, and Masala is hoping Judah will act as an informant. Pilate's arrival does not go well, as a would-be assassin tries to take him out. Fortunately, the assassin is not a very good shot. Unfortunately, Judah is blamed for the whole thing, and he and his family are arrested, and Judah becomes a galley slave. But through a wacky turn of events, he is eventually freed from slavery and becomes a chariot racer, and ultimately gets a chance to race against Masala and claim a measure of revenge. And every once in a while, Jesus shows up. He was in the neighborhood. Now I suppose one advantage this movie has over the classic 1959 version is the length, because the 59 version is almost four hours long. I'm not kidding. And this version is only about two hours. The story has been pretty heavily abridged, and noticeably so. Several of the events have been reduced to a montage or a voiceover, and a lot of plot points have just been eliminated entirely. This does make the movie much shorter, but it also makes it feel a bit rushed in places. And I was surprised by just how cheap this movie looks at times. It supposedly cost a hundred million dollars to make, but you wouldn't know that by looking at it. And I doubt most of the money went to the actors, because apart from Dreadlock's Morgan Freeman, which... That was a sight to behold, let me tell you. But yeah, apart from him, there really aren't any big-name actors in the movie. Like the classic version, this movie does have a big naval battle sequence after Judah becomes a galley slave, but unlike the classic version of this movie, we don't see much of the battle, because almost the entire thing is shown from Judah's point of view, and since he spends all of his time below decks, pretty much all we see are a bunch of guys rowing the boat, and whatever Judah can spot outside a nearby porthole. And that's it. Weak. Even the chariot race was kinda disappointing, although it's still the best part of the movie, easily, but there is a lot of obvious green screen work and some pretty bad CGI as well, and it just does not look right. The movie also has some really shoddy moments of ADR. 
during the chariot race, there's this one Persian racer who gets thrown off of his chariot, somehow survives the crash, at first anyway, and as he slowly picks himself up, he kind of bends over to grab his helmet off the ground, and as he does, there is this so obviously dubbed line where he says, My helmet. Oh, your helmet is what you were reaching for. Oh, given that you were obviously bending over to pick up your helmet, I never would have known. Like, why was that line even in there? And the damnedest thing is, up until that point, he had not spoken a single word of English. All of his dialogue was in Persian. But his last two words, just before getting trampled, are in English for some reason. I don't know why. And that was just one example. There were a few lines like that that just really did not need to be there. Most of the acting was okay. Huston was fine. Kebble was fine. Although, it is a bit weird that this movie takes place in the Middle East and everyone has these vaguely British accents for some reason. Except for Dreadlock's Morgan Freeman, who is not attempting an accent at all. Yeah, he is putting forth the minimal amount of effort. And, I mean... Even putting forth a minimal amount of effort, he's still Morgan Freeman, so he's still better than everyone else in the movie, but you can tell he's not trying at all. Compared to the 1959 version, they did change a few elements of the story. Um, this will be a little spoilery, but this movie's been out for several weeks, so I don't really feel the need to avoid spoilers at this point. Uh, Judah does not become a Roman citizen. Masala doesn't die. That surprised me. Jesus has a much bigger part in this movie compared to the mostly silent figure in the classic version. I don't... In the 1959 version, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I don't think he has any lines at all, and I don't even think we ever see his face. In this version, we do see his face, and he has many lines. But they're all just Bible quotes, and the way they're used, it does not sound natural at all. The biggest change I noticed, and probably the most questionable, is the way Judah is forced into slavery. In the classic version with Charlton Heston, while the new governor of Jerusalem is marching into town with his Roman army, Judah is watching the parade from up on his balcony, and unbeknownst to him, there were some loose stones in that balcony, and as he leaned against it, he accidentally pushed one of them free, and it nearly landed on the governor, and they're like, Hey, he's trying to kill the governor! Seize him! And they clap him in irons and throw him on a galley. Now, after they take him away, Masala goes up to the balcony to check on the stones because Judah was saying, No, no, it was an accident. The stones were loose. I didn't mean to do it. Like, bullshit, take him away. But Masala goes up to check the balcony and realizes, Oh yeah, the stones were loose. It was an accident. And he says nothing. His best friend, his brother, the guy he grew up with, and he just let him take the punishment that he did not deserve. And that was what motivated Judah to get some revenge, because this man that he called his brother had betrayed him. In the 2016 version, it plays out very differently. In this version, Judah gives shelter and medical aid to an injured zealot, hoping to convince him that violence against the Romans is not the answer. He was not very convincing, because when the new governor marches into town, the zealot grabs a bow and arrow and just tries to shoot the guy in the head. He misses, but, you know, big difference here, it was not an accidental assassination attempt, it was quite deliberate. And because Judah and his family were housing this zealot, they all took the blame for it, and they were arrested, and Judah's made a slave. Now, here's the problem. Judah still seeks revenge on Masala because Masala is the one who ordered him into slavery, but... Dude, you were harboring a fucking terrorist. What did you think was going to happen? It's not Masala's fault you were harboring a fugitive, you stupid sumbitch. That's on you. And this is the change from the original story that I really don't get. I'm glad they tried to put a different spin on things instead of just retelling the exact same story, but... It just doesn't work. So I don't think I would recommend going out of your way to see this one, but if you happen to catch it on cable, I guess there are worse ways to spend two hours. 
But honestly, if you want to see Ben-Hur, you're better off just watching the classic version. It's a much better movie. It's a much longer movie, so it'll take you a while to get through it, but it's worth it. And that about wraps it up for Ben-Hur. So until next time, take care.